Hello, welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all well. We've got a really interesting discussion uh, today uh, about cancel culture and how, you know, certain things were kind of brought to light, but then things were even clarified. Uh, statements were made essentially to condemn cancel culture by the individuals that brought certain things to light, accusations, uh, and apologies were made, very salient, you know, nice, thought out apologies but yet we're still cancelled people and I, I never like when's enough enough i guess you know so we're going to jump into that today and obviously this is about the uh, very famous warren ellis um and he is like he's, he's he's a comic legend um i'm sure most people would agree with that before we dive into it guys if you do enjoy this video then please do give it a like and please do share it it really does help the channel out especially at this very strange time on YouTube. Also, for those that still want to be entered into the competition to win a signed ornamental prop uh, for my film, Blackfields, then donate $5 or more. The GoFundMe is linked down below. We're running it up until the 19th of July, so we still got time. And if you don't know what that is, I'm making a horror, a horror movie, which I uh, crowdfunded for. So that's all linked down below. But let's dive into this, right? So, Obviously, a lot of people are aware of, of who Warren Ellis is. Uh, and if you don't know, short of it is very famous. Like, very famous uh, in comics. Um, has wrote some incredible stuff. Like, very, very good. Like, yeah, fine. You know, good good uh, within the industry. And, um, like, he, he, was, he was making um, this, this, this death metal spin-off. Which was hailed as like DC's kind of big event, one of their newer, bigger event things that they were doing, uh, which is probably one of the most profitable things that they've been doing, or at least perceived to be the most sort of enjoyable that they've been doing recently. Because if anyone knows, DC Comics they have been on a downward trend, like producing very strange ideas. Um, yeah, a lot of it's kind of fallen flat, but this a lot of people were really looking forward to. However, Warren Ellis will no longer be writing a very specific two-page story for the death metal spin-off one-shot Dark Knights, Death Metal Legends of the Dark Knights. And they released like an, oh, I want to say animatic, but it's not. It was this little cartoon thing. It was epic. I'm fairly certain Marilyn Manson did the tune for it. It was really cool. Uh, and I was hyped. Like, I saw that. I was hyped for this. Uh, I'm not... You know, I, I used to read a lot of 2000 AD and comic books and things like that, and I don't read too much anymore. But I would have bought that. Like, it looked cool. It looked really, really cool. However, he has had some allegations thrown against him. Now, it's bleeding cool. They reported uh, that Warren Ellis would no longer be doing it. So he was, he was doing this Bruce Wayne origin that would see him become Dinosaur Batman. And I, like, it's just weird, but it's super cool. It's one of those weird, random, cool things that fits this particular universe. Um, and now he's being replaced uh, by a new story from writer Margaret Bennett, uh, an artist, Jam Jamal Igle, or Igle, I don't know. So yeah, huge, sh uh, huge shame. Uh, DC sent out this statement to retailers saying, the previously announced two-page story in Dark Knight's Death Metal Legends of the Dark Knight's number one, uh, by Warren Ellis and Jim Chung, will be replaced with a two-page story written by Margaret Bennett, and obviously illustrated by uh, Jim, Jamal Eagle. Now, what's interesting is that all of these allegations were made uh, against him by Katie West. She's deleted the thread and has since kind of updated the context and the intent behind it, right? Now, it wasn't just him, there were multiple people, but also the allegations weren't direct allegations. So she's really clarified, yet he's still cancelled. Um, and he's even come out with a really, probably the best thing he could have said. And it was all really, really nicely, it was just really well thought out. They were the best responses you could have had in this situation, basically. And I always go to this, like, when is enough enough, you know? Like, when is it going to stop? So... To, to kind of get into it, allegedly, he was grooming, manipulating, and he would use several women uh, across the years, starting at very young ages, um, 
and these women claimed that he would base characters on them. Now, I'm sure some of that would be, you know, like a subconscious musing, no doubt. Of, like, I, why wouldn't that? Yeah, I would say that would happen, to be perfectly honest. Um, but the first allegations were made by Katie West in a now-deleted thread. Um, and, and like, I, I know a lot of people... So let, let's read the thread and then we're going to look at her because I think a lot of people would see the individual making the allegations and say, oh, well, you know, <laughs> you know, she works in the sex industry, basically. Um, and she posts like images of herself naked all over the Internet. So it sounds a bit rich, but I think with the added context behind it of her saying, I didn't want any of this crap. What are you talking about? Sort yourself out. That's when you go, oh, no, this woman has autonomy over herself. She clearly is fine, you know selling herself in that regard but she's not fine being you know groomed outside of that you know without you know the abuse of power and things like that which i think is perfectly reasonable um i think you you can separate the two is is more my point so she wrote yesterday i posted about men abusing their power in the comics industry to groom emotionally manipulate and have sex with or serially blue beard young women my intention was to protect young women from being harmed by these types of men in future um and that yeah that's fine i guess uh, but she would keep going right so i cited three men in particular two of whom i had personal experiences with however i didn't say my personal experience with these men was abusive so actually completely clarified I said that they were all men who abused their power. Uh, so, Brian Wood has since reached out to me to apologise and acknowledge his past behaviour. He's proven growth and reconciliation are possible. We have had a really good conversation. I believe Brian is listening uh, and learning and taking responsibility for his actions in the past. I'm currently listening to 35 plus women tell me of their experiences with Warren Ellis and that number keeps growing. If you have something you want to talk about, then you can re reach out to me at blah, 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 right? Now... This, this is where I start to draw like a problem with it, I guess, is that, you know, where do you say that there's an abuse of power, right? Because if you were, based on what I have just said, you know, she has autonomy and she's fine with it, but then, you know, she, she's not fine with people abusing power, etc, etc. But where do you draw the line at what an abuse of power is, right? This is a woman who, I mean, this is, this is, this is who it is, right? This is Katie West. Um, and Antifa, that says it all. Uh, socialist sex worker uh queer tweets delete after 90 days feminism without intersectionality uh, apparently is just white supremacy uh and i mean uh, you know she's got pronouns in the bio um what's an abuse of power would we consider an own an only fans an abuse of power would we i mean sure like where where do we start to say well what's an abuse of power this is a woman who um believes she has a power over men to some regard to pocket their coin so it's really difficult to start to kind of, you know, get to grips with where the moral compass lies on this. And I think ultimately, you know, Warren Ellis said a fantastic statement and it really was. So he said, look, Warren Ellis, uh, recent, recent statements have been made about me that need to be addressed. I have never considered myself famous or powerful to the point where I've made a lot of bad jokes about it for 20 odd years. It had never really occurred to me that other people didn't see it that, in the same way. And... Like, I will agree with this statement. Um, like, people... They, they, I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal direct to Warren Ellis, but the the perception, so how you perceive yourself versus how other people do, can sometimes be completely different. So when, when someone comes to me in the comments and says, I'm a fan, I'm like, what? No, how can you be a fan? Like, I'm, an, I'm a nobody, I'm a nothing. I just consider, you know, myself a dude that sits and talks about stuff uh, with subscribers, not fans. So I... I, I think that this is a perfectly reasonable statement to make um, and you can right you can be part of something but not feel like you are the upper end of it um, and he continues right and he says uh, you know that I was not engaging as an equal when gifted with attention but acting from a position of power and privilege I did not take that into account in a number of my personal interactions and this was a mistake and I own it while I have made many bad decisions in my past and I've said a lot of wrong things, let me be clear, I've never consciously coerced, manipulated or abused anyone, nor have I ever assaulted anybody. But I was ignorant of where I was operating from at a time I should have been clear. Uh, yeah, it should have been clear. And for that, I accept 100% responsibility. I hurt people deeply. I'm ashamed of these mistakes and I am profoundly sorry. I will not speak against other people's personal truths uh, and I will not expose them to the toxicity of the current discourse. I should... 
have been more aware, more present, and more respectful of people's feelings, and for that I apologise. I have had friendships and relationships end, sometimes in bitterness, often due to my own failings, and I continue to regret and apologise for the pain I've caused. I have always tried to aid and support women in their lives and careers, but I have hurt many people that I had no intention of hurting. I am culpable, I take responsibility for my mistakes, and I will do better, and for that I apologise. Um, I apologise to my friends and collaborators for having created this situation, and I hope they will be treated kindly. Mistakes and poor choices in my personal life are not on them, but only on me. We have a responsibility to one another every day, and I have, in my past, let too many people down. I hope to one day become worthy of the trust and kindness that was placed in me by colleagues and friends. I will continue to listen, learn, and strive to be a better human being, and I have sought to make amends with people, as I have been made aware of my transgressions, and will continue to do so. Uh, I have apologised, I apologise, and I will continue to apologise and take total responsibility for my actions without uh, e equivocation. Um, I'm going to be quiet now to listen, to listen more than I speak, and for other voices that matter far more than my own right now. That's a, an amazing statement, right? I don't think anyone can sit there and say that he's not just owning up and saying, look, I wasn't aware that I did this. I'm sorry that I did. You know, hey, please do forgive me. And I think that's perfectly reasonable. Um, but I definitely think that there needs to be, you know, a discussion to be had for, you know, where do we draw the line on the moral compass? This is a man who, for, if, if this statement is to be true, right, because that's the point, right? If he actually did abuse people, then clearly, like, he's a disgusting dog of a human being. But if he wasn't aware, and he thought that the interaction was in good faith, right, which you can do, people do do that, and to just kind of pull it out of thin air and say, definitely, no, he's absolutely got to be abusive. It's just simply like a misrepresentation of, you know, a standard fact that, you know, people do operate in bad faith sometimes without other people's knowledge. Um, he might have thought that it was perfectly good faith, whilst other people didn't pipe up at the time, didn't realise, uh, and he continued as is because he thought he was fine doing it, right? That, that can happen. So where do we draw the line? Like, that's a moral compass there. But then you've got the person making the accusations, you know, I mean, I mean, come on, like, where's the moral compass here? Where, where do we say what's wrong? Like, I would personally say that it's an abuse of power to sit there, you know, post, you know, flaunty little images of yourself and basically coerce people to uh, give you a whole bunch of money for it. I would say that's an abuse of power. I'd say it's a smart business move, but it's still an abuse of power. Uh, especially when some of these people may be financially uh, unstable to do so as well, you know. I don't know. I, I think there's definitely uh, a moral grey area here. Um, but anyway, she did go on to clarify, right? So she did say, I deleted that thread. I don't want this to ruin my life. And I don't want it to ruin anyone else's. This is not about one person. The people who are making it that way are missing the point. This is about pattern of behaviour and our collective complicity in that behaviour. And I may, I may agree with that to a certain degree, I mean, that's a nice way to kind of end it. Um, because, you know, no one wants him to be cancelled, but he has been cancelled. And as a result of that, you know, you, we, you can't just throw these things around. It, like, again, where, where does it end? The guy's clearly, like, what's, what's going to be enough for the braying mob? You know, what's going to be enough? If this statement isn't enough for people to go, oh, no, shit, you know, he's, he's pretty good, you know, that we should that's okay you know then how can anyone make mistakes how is anyone going to be prepared to own up to their mistakes in future if you know this doesn't appease the mob and we still lead to cancel culture i think you know when is enough enough i think this is perfectly reasonable statement to make i think it's perfectly fine uh, and yet he's still cancelled why it's just tragic you know and this is what we this is where we're at now like uh, apologies no matter how well, well thought out they are, are just never accepted. And it's just, tr it's a shame. Because ultimately, how can people learn from their mistakes if when you apologise with a very clear cut, very well thought out explanation for the actions, one which, you know, anyone with a heart can just look at and go, he accepts it, you know. He accepts that other people feel this way. He accepts that uh, he may have acted in bad faith but not realised it. And he's happy just to shut up and listen and take note now that people have actually said something. And you may look at it from a 
you know, a very cynical perspective and say it's just because he's been outed. And yet that may be the case, you know, but we still have to, you know, I think a certain benefit of the doubt does come into it somewhere along the line. So I don't know. Um, I thought I'd hand it on over to you, though, because personally, I feel like, you know, this kind of succumbing to the braying mob is just becoming far too much. I think cancel culture is getting out of control. Um, and I do think like a, you know, a certain moral, uh, I think there's some uh, morally questionable thoughts going on here, like in terms of the abuse of power, um, where one stands in one's personal actions who are making accusations and stuff. But I uh, hand it on over to you. What do you think? Let me know down below if you are new here. Do hit subscribe, step to date on the world of pop culture and movie news. Uh, and, you know, a bit of cancel culture videos such as this, I guess. You know, these are a little bit more thought-provoking. Uh, and I, I do enjoy the forum of discussion down below. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I've been Mr. H. Take care.